From time to time, history presents us with a clarifying moment. What was debated is suddenly inarguable. The scales fall from our eyes and everyone sees what before some of us said, but others could not hear or accept. Wednesday's murderous assault on our Capitol is such a moment. The Trump movement was revealed for what it was, for what it is. A mob of white supremacists egged on by the lies of a narcissist who cares only about the applause they give him and the online platforms and the hosts and politicians who monetize off of him. In this moment, it is not enough to condemn the sacking of our country's most important building. We must, each of us, draw a line against the system that created this. We need to draw a clear line in solidarity and declare enough, no more, and to pull everyone we can to our side now, while the wounds are, are fresh and the danger of inaction is palpable, while folks see what is clearly unacceptable. It is on us, pro progressives in particular, and, and particularly white progressives, to state clearly what just happened. This was more than the malignancy of Donald Trump, although God knows he is a cancer of the presidency, to borrow a phrase from Watergate. No, this is way bigger than Donald Trump. This is about America's toxic blend of systemic racism and capitalist exploitation, the manifestation of our country's original sin. Together, they created the white supremacists who stormed the Capitol, murdered a police officer, and left four of their own dead, too. Some of my friends and colleagues on the left have been saying that the seething mob was ultimately all about economic unfairness, that we just needed that $2,000 stimulus and a better economy, and this will heal. No, 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 no. That misses the lesson of American history. Racism is so intertwined with our unfair economic system that we cannot repair one without healing both. You cannot band-aid 300 years of systemic racism with a stimulus check. Racism isn't just our original sin. It is the wedge that exploiters have used for two centuries to divide working people by the color of their skin in our country. Those insurrectionists with their Confederate flags and don't tread on me banners, they were playing out one of America's original racist tropes. It is the one that has been used all through our history to divide us when we should have been uniting. Elon Musk is the world's richest man today after a record year of his profits during COVID as everyone suffers while the rest of America, white and black, got screwed, got sick, died, was not protected. Yet this, this crew took their battle flags to Capitol Hill to make one last stand. We can't leave it on the shoulders of our black sisters and brothers anymore to call this crap out. And I'm going to say it. We have to do it to speak out in ways that some white folks may only hear from us beyond showing up at demonstrations or hashtags. And if that means calling up or even calling out white allies or potential allies, then so be it. We all know that there is no negotiating with terrorists. Well, these are the, our domestic terrorists, and, and they need to be cut out like a cancer. Politicians of both sides need to reject their votes. Neoliberals need to abandon fiscal policies that enable racist economic systems. And tech companies must stop enabling incitement and hatred, blinded by the hate-driven profits. Enough. And popular podcast hosts on Spotify must stop platforming Alex Jones and Gavin McGinnis, the leader of Proud Boys. And Spotify, a publicly traded company, needs to stop rewarding folks who open the doors to folks who incite hate. There is no fair and balanced when you give Nazis a larger audience. We have a movement that needs to stand in solidarity. Solidarity. What was on display at the Capitol. There is no gray zone here. The line is clear. The line is clear. We need to stand up the way Brian Sicknick stood against the mob on Wednesday.
He was an Iraq war veteran who in 2004 opposed the re-election of George W. Bush. He couldn't stand the imperialist violence. After service as a staff sergeant in, New in the New Jersey uh, Air National Guard, Brian became a Capitol Police officer. On Wednesday afternoon, he tried to stop this angry armed mob surging through the Capitol. And while he was engaging the insurrectionists, someone cracked a fire extinguisher against his skull. He died at the hospital the next day, yesterday. Now, as critical as I've been of the police, it, it does break my heart that Brian survived and opposed our senseless wars only to die defending our Congress as it tried to count the presidential election votes, overwhelmed and overtaken by a mob. Without much support, as our leaders didn't plan for what was clearly being planned out in the open for weeks. Or was that intentional? Hmm. A lot of promises of change were spilled during the Black Lives Matter summer, along with the blood of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and Jacob Blake. But it is clear now that these words didn't really penetrate to the hearts or the minds of many allies, perhaps until now. Our brothers and sisters, our country is at a reckoning. White supremacy is not something that can be cleansed with street art and renaming of street signs or FBI investigations and white supremacy that go nowhere. What is new today is that the dangers of not repairing this rift are finally clear to people who we would not before have thought of as allies. I have heard from more than one friend in the last two days, I didn't realize it was so bad. Even after the hundreds of videos of police shooting people of color, even after Charlottesville, the Proud Boys attacks, the militia organizing to kidnap Governor Whitmore, the Oklahoma City bombing. Well, now you know. What's more, now everyone knows, the whole world knows. Oxygen is cracked through Mitch McConnell's corporate lobbyist echo chamber. Our job is to raise our voices together in solidarity to make it clear that banishing Trump is just the first step in repairing this. Remember, Trump didn't just send the mob to the Capitol. He has been nursing and coddling the racism for years, way before his presidency. Just a few days before this infamy, Trump vetoed a defense spending bill because at long last, it allowed the names of renegade Confederate soldiers to be stripped off of American military bases. That veto is the kind of fuel Trump was pouring on the fire before Wednesday. But he didn't start the fire. But we need to put it out for good now. Many, many people are suddenly appalled. It is our job to get them to convert their disgust, and in some cases embarrassment, into support for the work that needs to be done. Joe Biden is in a tough place with the tiniest of margins in Congress. He must take major actions and we must insist on it. No more compromises, no more handshake deals with shaky characters who have one foot on the soulless racial pandering of the right. The message is clear. There is no economic justice without racial justice and no racial justice without economic justice as Martin Luther King Jr. told us three quarters of a century ago. So find all those suddenly shaken Americans, whether it is your Republican leaning aunt or a member of the National Association of Manufacturers, find them, talk to them. Don't let them off the hook with words. This is the moment they may actually hear you. Speak for the most vulnerable in our society. As Thomas Paine once said, and we know too well, these are the times that try men's souls. The time for action and solidarity is now. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the nomikisho.com to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.